Hey everybody, it's the History Teacher. In this episode, we'll look at the Crusades. The Crusades were a series of military expeditions intended to free the Holy Land from Muslim control and keep it under Christian authority. Between 1096 and 1300, there were six major Crusades. In the year 1095, the Emperor of the Byzantine Empire, Alexius, decided to ask for help in fighting the Muslim Seljuk Turks, who were increasingly conquering Byzantine territory. Emperor Alexius requested military aid from Pope Urban II. At this time, a pope's power extended beyond religious affairs. At the Council of Clermont in France in November 1095, Pope Urban urged Christians to travel to the Holy Land and recapture it from the Muslims. That is, the Pope asked people to go on crusade, which means to take up the cross. The clothing and battle gear of crusaders was often emblazoned with a cross. For people who went on crusade, the Pope promised a plenary indulgence, meaning that crusaders would get to heaven faster when they died instead of waiting around in purgatory, the spiritual transition zone between heaven and hell. In a very religious age, this was a significant reward. For younger sons who couldn't expect to inherit any family lands, going on crusade offered the possibility of winning land, wealth, and status. So for both spiritual and worldly reasons, thousands of Christians eagerly responded to the Pope's call to arms. The first group to get underway in 1096 was the so-called People's Crusade, led by a preacher called Peter the Hermit. It was called the People's Crusade because it was mostly composed of peasants rather than knights or other elites. These crusaders, about 30,000 of them, were undisciplined and disorganized and left chaos in their path, which included looting other Christians. Upon reaching Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, Emperor Alexius recommended to the people's crusaders that they wait until the rest of the crusaders arrived before engaging the Turks. But they didn't, and the Turks killed most of them and sold the survivors into slavery. Also in 1096, another band of crusaders led by a German nobleman, Count Emico, robbed and massacred Jews in the Rhineland area of modern Germany instead of battling Muslims in the Christian Holy Land. By August 1096, four professional armies of crusaders had been organized, composed primarily of people from France, but also included others from throughout Europe. These armies consisted of between 25,000 and 50,000 knights and infantry. Completing a journey of several months, the crusaders arrived in the Holy Land. After waging successful warfare against the Turks, the crusaders established four independent states at Edessa, Antioch, Tripoli, and Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the holiest city in Christianity, had been controlled by the Muslim Fatimids of Egypt. After a month-long siege, the Crusaders captured it in July 1099. The Muslims in Jerusalem had been promised protection by Tancred, who was the leader of the Crusader army there. But when they entered the city after conquering it, Crusaders nevertheless slaughtered hundreds of men, women, and children. In 1130, the Turks began successfully fighting back. In 1144, they reconquered Edessa, the northernmost crusader state. The purpose of the Second Crusade, between 1147 and 1149, was to recapture Edessa. The crusaders were led by King Louis VII of France and Conrad III of Germany, both competent and strong leaders. However, the crusader army was crushed by the Turks and the Second Crusade was a failure. In 1187, Muslim military leader Saladin destroyed a crusader army at the Battle of Hattin and thereby resumed Muslim control of Jerusalem. The loss of Jerusalem instigated the Third Crusade, 1189-1192, to in which King Richard I of England, known as Richard the Lionheart, was the most significant leader. The crusaders defeated Saladin at the Battle of Arsuf and succeeded in re-establishing Christian control in the region north of Jerusalem. But Richard realized that, though he may be able to conquer Jerusalem, his forces weren't large enough to stop the Muslims from almost immediately capturing it again. So instead of continued fighting, Richard and Saladin signed a treaty in 1192 which, in return for peace, guaranteed Christian pilgrims the right to visit shrines in Jerusalem. It should be noted, though, that Muslims had never prohibited Christians from doing that. In the Fourth Crusade, instead of traveling by land, the Christian army hired Venetians to transport them to Constantinople by sea. In order to pay for their transportation, and motivated by greed and envy, crusaders attacked and looted Constantinople, the Christian capital of the Byzantine Empire, in 1204. The Western Christians established the Latin Kingdom of Constantinople, which lasted for about 50 years until the city was retaken by the Byzantine Emperor. So in the Fourth Crusade, 
the Crusaders never even made it to the Holy Land. In the Fifth Crusade, European Christians attacked Egypt but were ultimately defeated by Muslim forces in 1221. In the Sixth Crusade, in 1229, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Frederick II, was able to secure Christian control of Jerusalem through a negotiated treaty rather than through warfare. When the treaty expired ten years later, Muslims reclaimed Jerusalem. After the Sixth Crusade, there were other efforts to establish Christian control in the Holy Land, but they were unsuccessful. Some historians contend that there were seven Crusades, while others count eight or more. It depends on how someone defines Crusade. Regardless, the six that have been described here are widely considered the most significant. Christians were ejected from their last enclave in the Holy Land, the city of Acre, in 1291. The Crusades severely damaged relations between Christians and Muslims, with consequences that reverberate to this day. But there were other effects, too. For Europeans, the Crusades resulted in enhanced knowledge of world geography and distant people. And, Crusaders returned to Europe with ancient artifacts, texts, and ideas, which would later help to spark the Renaissance. Exposure to advanced Muslim mathematics and science contributed to European technological advancement. While in the Middle East, Crusaders developed a taste for the spices traded there, such as cinnamon, nutmeg, pepper, and ginger. Centuries later, the search for a shorter sea route to the Asian source of these spices led a sailor from Genoa to launch an expedition across the Atlantic. He didn't reach the spices, but Christopher Columbus reached the Americas instead. All right, that does it for now. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.